Hello everyone and welcome to this very first video that I'm doing for the 2017-2018 school year. Uh, this one comes out of period two and it deals with the Native Americans and the English primarily in the New England area and the culture clash that's going to happen. I'm going to try and keep this one brief and I'm just going to give a brief overview of two very interesting moments, the Pequot War and King Philip's War. Now, before we get started, I've been telling you a lot how the importance of theme uh, throughout our AP course. Culture and society is obviously a very, very important one. Uh, what happens to culture when it comes to conflict and contact with another culture? Right? We see Europeans and Indians. In this situation, if you notice the style of dress, this would be the Dutch. Uh, and as I told you, you know, the Dutch very much into trade with the Indians. They're not really looking necessarily to take land. Uh, but the English, it's going to be a completely different situation. And that will lead to more conflict as they come into contact with them. And it will affect certain cultural norms when you come into contact with other societies. Uh, how does it affect trade? Uh, how does trade affect you? You get new items into your society that you never had before. You start to understand that each culture has a different goal. And if the goals start to come into more and more conflict, well, unfortunately, that can lead to war. And we're going to talk again about these two particular ones with the English and the Native Americans. Uh, also, I want to point out that a lot of my information comes from these particular two books. Uh, Nathaniel Philbrick's Mayflower, a great book if you ever get a chance to read it. And of course, if you're in my classroom, you know you're already reading Alan Taylor's American Colonies. So let's look at this particular image here. This is the Massachusetts Bay Colonies uh, Grand Seal. Uh, you see you have a Native American Indian and he's very scantily dressed, to say the least. And he's expressing, come over and help us. It's taken from the Bible where the Apostle Paul had a dream of a Macedonian man and asked them to step over into Macedonia and come over and help us. And so these Puritans, these religious individuals who are the founders of Massachusetts, see their role like the Apostle Paul and the Indians like the Macedonians who are asking for help. But you have to ask yourself some things. Do you think the Indians really wanted that help? Right? Uh, it's kind of presumptuous, I guess is the word I'll use here, uh, on the part of the English. Plus, look at how they have them dressed. I mean, really? Really? It's New England. It gets really, really cold and he's wearing leaves, not even fur, leaves. I'll just kind of leave that with you and let that simmer for a little bit. Maybe you can start to understand why these English would draw this particular type of cartoon. Well, it's interesting. Uh, what starts to happen here in what is the New England area, Massachusetts predominantly, in 1620, you have the Pilgrims who showed up first. Uh, they were the Separatists, and we'll talk a lot more about that in class. And then 10 years later, in 1630, the Puritans come, and they come by the thousands. And they start to set up Boston, and, and they begin to build other uh, communities and villages. But there are Native Americans here. Now, unlike the English that went to Virginia, where they met a very strong nation, the Powhatan people. Um, deadly diseases had come through this area, 1616 through 1619, most notably smallpox, and it devastated a lot of the local Indian tribes. And there are only a few of the tribes that were able to survive, most notably the Pequot. Um, they begin to grow in power and influence in the area. Uh, they conquer some of the local Indian tribes. They ally with other Indian tribes. And they're uh, having good relationships and bad relationships. Again, like any other uh, nation of people, they have good diplomacy and bad diplomacy with their, their neighboring uh, countrymen. Um, but the English are here, these Puritans in 1630. And between then and 1634, within just four years, a lot of misunderstandings. 
Pequot feel like they're the, you know, they're the real, you know, king of the block, as it were. And these Englishmen should pay them tribute. And the English feel like, no, the, these Pequots should pay them some tribute. And in 1634, a Captain John Stone is killed. And I should make note of this. John Stone is not a very nice guy. It's not like, he's not even a Puritan. He's just an Englishman out here who's going up and down the rivers, and he's trading. He's an alcoholic, and he winds up getting himself some trouble with some Indians, and he dies. But the Puritans feel like, you know, someone should stand trial for this. And then two years later, another group of Indians kill English sailors, and most notably this John Oldham, who is a pretty popular guy. What the English want is to hold a trial. And they would actually like the Pequot to come to the trial and see English law and have them understand the fairness of law. But the Pequot do not trust this and they refuse. And eventually this is going to lead to straight up war between the two groups in 1637. Now the Pequot outnumber the English. So the English decide to get Mohegan and Narragansett allies. At first, these two Indian tribes aren't necessarily willing to fight, but the English convince them, and the Mohegans and the Narragansett, they're not exactly friends with the Pequot anyway, and they would like some, something out of it. One of the things they both tribes would like are the women and any horses that perhaps the Pequot have, and they agree to this. And in May of 1637, this village along the Mystic River in Connecticut. This is in Connecticut. The English come upon them at night. They surround their village. Their village has what's called a palisade or a, or a wooden stakes fence, probably about eight to 10 feet high, surrounding their village. Some 500 individuals live in here and they attack it. They have their Indian allies stay on the outside and the Englishmen come in. There are two entrances a Captain John Underhill and a Captain John Mason come in with their troops in these two areas here. But they're outnumbered. As soon as they come in, it, it, they realize quickly in both ends that they, there's no way they can fight their way out of this. So one of the captains yell out, we must burn them. And they set this village on fire. And then the English come back out and any of the Pequot that try to escape by climbing the fence, they shoot and kill them. They set fire to the village and they massacre almost everybody in here. The Mohegans are not happy over this. Uh, they yell out, uh, Mohit, Mohit, which is too much, you do too much. They didn't expect they were gonna massacre all the people. But these Puritans believe it's God's will. And this is a moment that is important for our history because it, it brings genocide to the Americas. It begins this idea that it is okay to basically massacre Indians. It's God's will, they're savages, uh, they don't belong on the land. Now this was not the only Pequot village. Uh, the war does continue on, there are other villages, but when word gets out that this happens, the Pequot basically lose heart in this fight, and they wind up losing this war. Many of the men that are captured in the other villages are sold into slavery into the Caribbean, and the women are given to the Narragansett and the Mohegan, basically trying to wipe this race out. And a relative sense of peace will set in in Massachusetts and Connecticut and these areas in New England for about 40 years. But there's a lot of changes that's gonna happen over these 40 years between the 1620s and the 1670s. Changes for the new generation of the natives in the area, right? They're hunting beaver because of the fur and all of a sudden they're becoming extinct. Many of the Indians in the area used uh, sea shells that they called wampum for money. This becomes devalued. The, the English begin to devalue it on purpose to ruin their economy. Obviously, they're losing land because of the encroachment of more and more Englishmen, and they're bringing livestock, horses and cows and pigs. They're constantly eating the Indian supplies. They're constantly taking up more land, and these animals also bring disease. But Puritan society is going to change, too. Now, we haven't talked about Puritans yet. We're going to do that in class. 
but you are supposed to watch the video, my class, to watch the video on the English Civil War, so you get an idea of what is happening in England and how it affects the Puritans in America. But these extremely religious people that come over in 1630, within about a decade, it all starts to change for them. Their religion starts to fall apart. Uh, by 1662, you're going to get this halfway covenant because they, they're not really sure about the church. So they start allowing for halfway membership of the church. Boston is becoming more commercial and less spiritual. And their ideas of predestination, the idea that God preordains everything, their city upon a hill concept is starting to fall apart by the time we get to the next big war. 1675, 1676, King Philip's War. Now, King Philip's War is the bloodiest war ever fought on American soil as far as death per ratio of population. Um, to put it in context, the Civil War is about 6% of the population died, and that's a lot of people. I mean, if you think about it today, if 6% of the population died in a war today, you're talking millions of people. In this war, close to 20% of the population are going to die. Well over 1,000 colonists and close to 4,000 Native Americans are going to die. This is one of the bloodiest, well, again, it is the bloodiest actual war on the American continent when you're talking about the population ratio and the death that happens. And again, this starts because of misunderstanding. You know, the, the English are constantly taking land. They take an old Roman law, vacuum domicilian, vacant land theory, and believe that the Indians don't own the land. They don't deserve the land. They vacated the land, and they have a right to it. Now, some Indians are starting to get kind of upset about this, and one of them is this Metacom. Metacom is the son of another Indian called Massasit. You may not recognize that name yet, but we'll talk about him in class. Massasit is the Indian that had the first Thanksgiving with the pilgrims, something that I think a lot of you have been hearing about since, I don't know, elementary school, right? The first Thanksgiving and all that stuff. Well, that was Massasit back in 1620, 1621, 1622. Here we are now in 1675, and here's Metacom, the son of Massasit. He realizes the English want land, and he starts to sell his land. But he's secretively buying guns, is what he's doing. And he's arming various tribes. He is of the Wam uh, Wampanoag Indians. He also convinced the Narragansett to join with them. And you might remember the Narragansett, 40 years earlier, fought with the British against the Pequot. Now the Narragansett fight against the English. And there's a lot of misunderstanding. You have a generation of individuals who, have, who do not remember 40 years ago. They don't remember how it was getting along with the Indians. Now it's, it's very hostile. A John Sassaman is an Indian. He's an Indian interpreter for the English. And he's a very popular person among the English. Well, somebody kills him. Some... One of the other Indian tribes kill him because they think he's more of a spy. This triggers the war. Uh, the, the English want someone to pay for the death of John Sassaman. They want a trial. They want someone to go on trial. And Metacom, who is, he takes the Christian name Philip, by the way. He took the name Philip to try to, you know, to, you know, get along with the Puritans. The Puritans mockingly call him King Philip. Uh, he never called himself King Philip. This is a portrait of him. Um, so the, the Wampanago uh, Indians, the Narragansett Indians, there are other Indian tribes. They're all acquiring muskets. They're buying them from French and Dutch traders uh, specifically. And it becomes obvious that something bad is about to happen, and it is. There, a massive attack happens on Massachusetts in 1675. This is massive war. 52 different villages are attacked, 12 of which are burnt to the ground. Several hundred uh, of the colonists are killed. Many of them, thousands of them, begin running to Boston to, for help. Uh, they, they raise armies to go out. In the first year of the war, it's a disaster for the Puritans. 
they, they're losing the battles to the Indians. The Indians know the land better. They're much better at shooting the guns. They're better aimers than, are the, than the English are, who really aren't soldiers to begin with. And because of their religious beliefs, they believe God has punished them. And they decide to attack friendly Indians. Uh, praying towns were established early on to help convert Indians to Christianity. Perhaps over a thousand of them live in various towns called praying towns. And a lot of these colonists descend upon praying towns and begin to massacre these peaceful Indians as retribution. Other uh, individuals here, other Englishmen, actually try to save these Indians. Uh, they wind up getting as many of them they, they can together. They get them to Boston, and they put them out on one of the islands out in Boston Harbor. But it's an island that's barren, and a winter hits. It's pretty cold, and a lot of them wind up dying on that island. I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to take a lot of time talking about this, but if you ever get to read the Mayflower especially, they talk about Benjamin Church. He's an interesting character. He, uh, he actually really liked the Indians, and he didn't want this war at all. And he tried to convince the Narragansett specifically, don't go to war. He went to other tribes convincing them, don't go to war. But when they did go to war, Massachusetts called upon him. He had military skills. He didn't want an army. He wanted a small band. You know, like today we call these special op groups. He's got like a special op, a small band, maybe 20, maybe 30 guys, some of which are Native American Indians that are working with him. He goes out in there and just with just a small group of guys, he starts winning battles. Um, but their main goal is to hunt Metacom. Interesting thing about this war that's called King Philip's War. Metacom actually doesn't participate in it. Once the war breaks out, he got what he wanted. He wanted a war to start, but he realized this became a really bloody mess. He, he basically goes and hides in a swamp. And this guy, Benjamin Church, is out there trying to find him. He believes if I can take out Medicom, the war will end. It's the Narragansett who really pressed this war into 1676. And it's at that moment when the tide does turn, when the British begin to win battles and they begin to massacre Indians. They do, Benjamin Church's small band figure out where Medicom is and they do attack where he's at in the swamp and trying to escape, he is shot dead by one of Benjamin Church's uh, guys, and it actually turned out to be a Native American who shot him. Um, and I told you about a lot of these famous people, they cut their heads off. Yes, Metacom's head is cut off, and it's brought to Boston, and it's put on display for 10 years. People will come and look at this head. With the death of Metacom and the many losses of the Narragansett and some other Indians, and now the, in, the, the, the English colonists go north and get a new Indian ally to fight with them called the Mohawks. The Mohawks are part of the Iroquois Confederation. And the Mohawk have no love for the Indians in this area, and they agree, and they come in here by the thousands. And when that happens, all the Indians here in New England start to surrender, right? It turned into a civil war for Indians, is really what happens here. You have Mohawk Indians on one side with other Indians that did not like Narragansett. They didn't like the Wampanoag Indians. And all of a sudden, the Civil War broke out. And that's really what brings this to an end, more so than anything else. You've got the death of Metacom, and then other Indians, they took sides against each other, and it all fell apart. It was the last big moment for New England Indians to try to get their lands back. And it failed miserably. And again, it is the bloodiest war in American history. When you talk about the ratio of death per population, almost 20% of the people died here. And in the end, Indian culture suffered greatly. Uh, those Indians that did ally with the English within 100 years, right, it, it's gonna turn against them. As we talked about in class, uh, it, it's never going to always end up well for Native Americans. And it's a sad situation in our history. And it's one that absolutely needs to be talked about more and more. 
again, I try to make this video brief for you guys. If you want to read more about this in our book, American Colonies, uh, you've got the Pequot War on pages 194 to 197, and King Philip's War is dealt in, in much more depth than I did here on pages 199 to 203. Also, in America's History, our textbook, 65, notice, only a page talks about both of them, 65 and 66. What do I tell you about high school textbooks? They're bad. All right, that's enough of that. Hope to see you guys all soon in class. Have a good evening. Don't forget to get the video logs that are on Edmodo and answer the three questions that go with this video and the three questions that go with the English Civil War. All right, good night.